Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create 2D drawings from your 3D worldview. Now what that means is you're taking 3D objects and representing them on a 2D flat surface using lines. To get started, make sure you have a layout loaded in the 3D world, or at least one component. Otherwise, you'll have nothing in the 3D world to make a drawing from. Next, go ahead and click the Drawing tab, and notice this displays the drawing world, which is a two-dimensional space. Now to create a drawing, go here in the ribbon to a group called Create View, and notice you have a couple options for making drawings. So you can either select what you want in the 3D world to make a drawing from, or you can use a standard view that will create a drawing of everything in the 3D world. So notice you have these standard views of top, bottom, left, right, front, and back. Let's go and create a standard view drawing, so I'll click top. And what this will do, it will use an orthographic projection, so all the lines are parallel, and make a drawing from the top view of the 3D world. And now to understand what I meant by orthographic projection, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click the select command here to select what I want in the 3D world to create a new drawing from. And I'll go here to the view selector in the 3D world. And let's actually use the top down view, like so. So it's the exact same view I just used, but I used a standard view command in the drawing. So now I will drag the pointer to create a selection box around what I want to draw, in this case everything. And I'll go ahead and collect all those lines from the components and then generate the new drawing which we can see here. Now notice the difference. So when I selected the drawing, I was using a perspective projection. So that's why we can see these edges of the lines of this component here and here. But notice over here, the standard view drawing used orthographic projections. So it just sees the flat object like so. You can also do this as well when you're selecting. So if I actually go back here to the Create View group and click Select, notice I can go ahead and change my view of what I want to select and move around the 3D world. I can also go here to the 3D world toolbar and change the projection from perspective to orthographic. So now if I go back to the top view, like so, notice I basically am getting the same drawing as if I used a standard view. So let's actually select this again to see how it works. So we'll collect all those lines again and generate the new drawing. Now this change I made is only happens or is not permanent, so it's only when I'm making the drawing. So notice here I selected my own drawing and it used orthographic projection but over here I use perspective. So let's actually go back to the select command and notice that the perspective projection is back on and let's actually just select a part of the component here and let's see what happens. So now I selected just a piece or parts of components in the 3D world to make a drawing from and notice that's exactly what it drew. So it collected those lines in the area of my selection and it created the drawing. Now one thing to remember when you're creating a new drawing is its scale. So in the drawing world, I have this drawing selected. And if I go here to the Drawing Properties panel, notice it has a scale property. And this controls the scale of your drawing. So right now it's set to 1 to 1. But I can change this to be 1 to 15. So 1 unit per every 15 units. And I can actually change that back to 1 to 2 if I wanted to. Notice the drawing gets a bit bigger. Or I can set it back to be 1 to 1. Now this is a common property for all other drawings. So in the drawing world, I'll go ahead and select every drawing I have. Notice in the Drawing Properties panel, I have that scale property for them. And if I want to change the scale for all the drawings, I can just select them all, then change the scale property like so. Now this can become quite tedious, so the way to scale any new drawing is to use a drawing template. And I'll show you how to do that now. So what I'll first do is delete all of my drawings. And now I'll go to the Drawing Group and click this command here called Load Template. And in the template import task pane, notice I have a couple templates available. And these are based on paper sizes, so it makes exporting and printing drawings easier. So we have A0 up to A4, but you can add new drawing templates if you wanted to. They're just components. So let's actually use the A4 drawing template. And then click import to load that into the drawing world. So now to set the scale for any new drawing, I'll select the drawing template like so. And in the component properties panel, I'll set the scale property for the template from 1 to 100 to be, uh, let's use 1 to 5. That looks good. And that might be actually a bit too big, so let's set that to be 1 to 15. And now let's go and take a standard view drawing. So in the Create View group, I'll click Top. And there's my new drawing, and notice that it is scaled based on the template scale property, so 1 to 15. That's still a bit too big, so I actually will delete this drawing. And go back to my template. And let's set the scale to be 1 to 25, sounds good go and create that same drawing again, so the top down view. And there's my drawing, and it's scaled based on my template. Now, if you want to add any annotations or dimensions to your drawing, you know, you can go ahead. 
But what you can also do is create a bill of materials based on the drawings you have in your template or what you have selected. So if I actually go up here to the bottom group and click create, notice that the template does have a table for listing the bill of materials or the components in my drawing. So notice it actually selected the sensor conveyor, the robot, and the battery conveyor. Now these properties are controlled by the components themselves, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'll click the Home tab, and let's go and select the robot. And notice in the Component Properties panel, it has this bomb property. So this means that the component can be included in a bill of materials table. It also has a bomb name and description. Likewise, if I actually select all of the components by pressing the Control plus A key, notice they all have that bomb property, the bomb name, and the bomb description property. So what we can do, we actually can generate a bill of materials for every single component in my layout. So I will we'll go ahead and select this checkbox here for bomb. Notice that I have six components selected, so they're all going to be showing in the bill of materials table. And I'll go back to the drawing tab, and since I'm using a template, I'll go ahead and click create. And notice I now have six items for the six components in my layout. And notice they're automatically annotated for me here. Another thing to notice is that when you select a drawing, and move it around, notice that the annotations dimensions are attached to that drawing. So I have those annotations from 1 to 6, and they move with the drawing. Likewise, if I create a dimension, in this case a linear dimension, like so, and I press the escape key to exit out of that command, and then move the drawing, I'm moving the dimensions and the annotations of that drawing. Now, if you want to export or print a drawing, that's simple enough. But understand you cannot save a drawing separate from a layout, so your drawings in the drawing world are always saved with a 3D layout. So if I want to export this drawing, I can go here to the export command, click drawing, and notice over here I have a couple options. So I can export it to a PDF or some other type of file here. I can also print the drawing, so in the print group I'll click drawing, and this takes me backstage, and you have a couple options here. So you can define the page size of your drawing, so I'm using A4. And right now it's set to landscape view for everything is scaled based on that view. But if I go here and clear the scale to fit checkbox, notice that will change the way it looks. And my drawing actually will you know be cut off when it's printed. So I'm actually going to turn that scale to fit property back on. And another thing to mention is actually you can print your 3D view or what you have in the drawing world. So I have current drawing selected here. And I actually can select in the drawing of what I want to print. So actually, we'll click the area selection box here to show you what I mean. And let's just go ahead and drag a selection box around the drawing I have, not the template. So I selected that. And then we'll go ahead and create a print preview for me in the backstage. And notice it's now print previewing the drawing I selected in the drawing world, not the template and its drawings. So that's what will be printed here. Now, if I don't want to scale to fit, I can just clear this checkbox here and notice it's still within the page dimensions, so everything looks good. Now if you don't want to print this to a hard copy, you know, you can just change your print settings here, and notice I can just change to print it to a PDF if I wanted to. Alright, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.